are some examples um, covered in our module 5.2. So let's go over them one, uh, one by one. Let's have this first problem. So a class in advanced physics is comprised of 10 juniors, 30 seniors, and 10 graduate students. And the final grade showed that three of the juniors, 10 of the seniors, and five of the graduate students received an A for the course. So if a student is chosen at random from this class and is found to have earned an A, what is the probability that the student is a senior? Okay, so before uh, we do anything else, um, let's have a tabular form of uh, the data that, uh, that is given in this problem. So um, we have students who got an A and um, in the given number of students, there will be those who did not get an A. So for the juniors, uh, which we will denote by J, okay, there are three of them who uh, got an A. So of the total of 10, that means to say seven did not get an A. And there are a total of um, 30 seniors, which we denote by S in this case, and 10 of them got an A, so therefore 20 did not get an A. And we have 10 graduate students, wherein 5 of them got an A, so correspondingly 5 of them did not get an A. So let me come up with the total for each of uh, the columns that we have here, for a total of 50 students. Now in the question or in the problem, we are asked that if a student is chosen at random from this class, and is found to have earned an A, we are interested with the probability that the student is a senior. So let me just say in this question, okay, the event that must have happened or must um, be satisfied or the condition that must be satisfied is that the student earned an A. So among those who earned an A, what will be the probability that the student is a, Z, uh, is a senior? So in our table here, uh, we have a, a total of 18 students who got an A. And of the 18 students, how many are actually seniors? Okay, so it's clear to see that there are 10 of them out of the 18 of those who got an A. Okay, now using the formula that we have for conditional probability, we indicate it by the following notation. There is a probability that the student is a senior, okay, given that the student got an A uh, is given by, we get the intersection of the probability of a senior and uh, a senior student and having an A, and we divide it by the probability that the student got an A. So in our table, the intersection is given to be 10. That is 10 out of the total, which is 50. So therefore, we will have 10 over 50. And the probability that a student gets an A is that a total is 18 out of the grand total, which is 50. So in this case, we cancel out 50, we end up with 10 over 18, and that will be simplified to 5 over 9. In decimal value, that is equal to 0 0.5556. So we take uh, four decimal places. Okay, I hope this is clear. All right, or using the intuitive approach that we have presented in our uh, discussion, um, of those who got an A, which is 18, of the 18, there were 10 seniors. So therefore, you will end up with 10 over 18, which is exactly what we have here. And that corresponds to uh, 5 over 9, which is equivalent to 0 0.5556. Okay? Let's have our second example. In our second example, we have a random sample of 200 adults that are classified according to sex and level of education attained. So we have elementary, secondary, and college, and we have the male and um, the female adults, okay? Um, however, in, the, in this case here, we consider uh, the level of education attained uh, by these um, individuals as their highest um, level of education attained, okay? So um, that means to say if um, the individual uh, got a college uh, degree, well, that means to say they will belong in this category. However, if, this, if the individual... Um, is uh, in the secondary uh, level of education, then he or she would belong in this category. The same is true for the elementary level. Right? Now, if a person is picked at random from this group, we find the probability that the person is a male given that the person has a secondary education. And we're also interested with letter B, the person does not have a college degree given that the person is a female. Let's deal with these two problems one by one. So let's focus first on question uh, letter A. Okay, so here, if uh, we're looking for the probability that the person is a male given that the person has secondary education. So the condition in this statement, okay, is the event that the person has a secondary education and that is indicated by this column. And we're looking for the probability 
that that person is a male. Okay, which will be taken from that um, column. Okay, so here, um, using our notation for conditional uh, probability, okay, so we uh, get the probability that the person is a male given that the person has a secondary education. So using our formula, we uh, compute or we determine the probability of the intersection of a male and secondary education. We divide it by the probability that the person has a secondary education. And from the table that we have, the intersection between uh, this row and this column is 28 out of the grand total, which is 200. So we have uh, 28 over 200, and we divide it by the probability of um, the person having a secondary education, and the total of that is 28 plus 50 will give you 78 out of the grand total, which is 200. So canceling 200, we end up with 28 over 78, which is simplified to 14 over 39, and that will be equal to 0 0.3589. So we get up until uh, you round off up to the fourth decimal place. Okay, so you can verify if we have come up with the correct values here. Let us proceed with um, question letter B. Okay, using the same table that we have here. For letter B, we are interested with the probability that the person does not have a college degree given that the person is a female. So from our table, the condition is that the person is a female. Of the female um, students or the female adults that we have here, or what will be the probability that the student or the person does not have a college degree? So in our table, we have this row for the college degree. However, we are interested with the number of those students who do not have a college degree or the number of adults who do not have the college degree. And that would indicate that they either have elementary or secondary education. Okay, so we keep in mind um, the following. Uh, values that we have in the table using our formula for conditional probability. So the condition here is that the person is a female and we are looking for the probability that the uh, person does not have a college degree, which we indicate by the complement of C. Okay, we say not college. So kung not college in our table, that means to say having elementary or secondary education. Well, given that the student or the person is a female. And in this case, by our formula, so we get the intersection of those who do not have a college degree and belonging in the female category. And that is indicated by these two values that we have here coming from the elementary and secondary level of education. Okay, and we divide it by the probability that the student is or the person is a female. And in this case, how did we get 95? That's because... We have 45 plus 50, so that will give you 95 out of the total number of adults, which is 200. And we divide it by the probability that the person is a female, which is the sum, or the total number of females, which is the 112 out of the 200 adults that we have yeah, in this problem. Simplifying that, we get 95 over 112, and that is equivalent to or approximately equal to 0.8482. I hope uh, this is clear. Okay, for our problem number two, let us proceed with the third problem, the last problem that we will have uh, as our example. For, so for, number number, uh, for problem number three, a service station manager knows from past experience that 60% of their customers use a credit card when they purchase gasoline. So we're interested with the probability that the next two customers purchasing gasoline will each use a credit card. Okay. So um, let us um, indicate the two events involved in this problem. So let's take event A is the event that the first customer uses a credit card when purchasing gasoline. And let's have letter B, which is the event that the second customer would use a credit card when purchasing gasoline. And since we're looking for the probability that the next two of them or two customers will purchase gasoline, that means to say the first customer will purchase, a gas, uh, will pur will purchase gasoline using credit card. And the second customer would also use a credit card when buying gasoline. And in this case here, the two are said to be independent events. How is that so? That's because when the first customer would decide to use his or her credit card, okay, that will not influence the decision of the second customer to use a credit card when purchasing gasoline. Okay, so therefore, they are independent events. 
So if we're looking for the probability of um, the intersection of uh, two independent events, we simply have to multiply their individual probabilities. Okay, because whatever is the outcome of the first event will have no influence on the outcome of the second event. So therefore, going back to the problem, the probability that they will use a credit card is 60% of the time, or that is equivalent to 0.60 or 0.6. So therefore, we come up with 0.60 times 0.60, and that will give you 0.36, okay, which is a probability that the first customer uses a credit card and the second customer would also use a credit card when purchasing gasoline. Okay, so we end our discussion here for uh, module uh, 5.2. Thank you.